Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Travel in Suit, while I'm exploring hidden gems while wearing a suit. And today is my first official episode, and I've been waiting long enough before I actually launch it. I hope you enjoy this content and want to ride this adventure along with me. If you live in Toronto, you have probably been or at least heard about Scarborough Bluffs. It's a fantastic place with gorgeous views of the lake right off the cliff. However, due to its popularity, oftentimes there is a huge crowd of visitors and it's really tough to get united with the nature or enjoy the atmosphere. However, what if I tell you that literally 10 minutes away from Scarborough Bluffs, there is the same picturesque places with nobody else around. And this is exactly where I'm going to take you today. Suit is on, I'm ready to start. In order to deliver the most holistic view of today's location, I'm going to show you this place from two points. First, I'll get on top of the cliff and have a tour in this park. Second, I'll walk all the way down to the lake and you can see what's going on down there. If you're driving from the downtown of Toronto towards eastbound on the Kingston Road, you need to go until you hit an intersection with Markham Road. From here, it will take you maybe 5 minutes to get to our first location, the park on top of the cliff. The second location, which will take you to the lake, is a few blocks down towards the west and sits at the intersection of Kingston Road and Bellamy Road. I begin my video by driving to the first destination, the park at the peak of the cliff. I discovered this park uh, last year by pure accident and uh, it turned out that this park is actually literally minutes away from my house and uh, ever since it has become really one of my favorite places in the city because it's always quiet and it's just beautiful and on the way there to this park uh, you may see a lot of beautiful houses uh, uh, nice uh, tiny roads so it's a uh, it's a nice and quick uh, drive and of course uh, once we get the, once we get there you guys you guys be amazed how beautiful this place is I can't wait to show you I just parked my car and I want to share a couple of notes if you're driving you can leave your car along the road because if I'm not mistaken According to the city bylaw, you can park your car for up to three hours unless otherwise is mentioned on a street sign. And this is free. And as soon as you park your car, here's the entrance to the park. Uh, the size of the park is not uh, really huge, uh, but there are a lot of different trails. I haven't been uh, on all of them. But the, the main pleasure of this park is that it actually goes to the edge of the cliff that's overlooking the lake at the height of over 30 meters. Okay, I have arrived uh, to the edge of this cliff that I've been calling out. And, uh, you know, honestly, the view is just breathtaking. Uh, and in a second, you're gonna see it as well. this view you can honestly come here and I guess for those who work from home bring a folded chair set it up here and you can work for the entire day and looking at this view how does it sound what really impresses me the most is that all along this bluff there are actually real houses 
Just imagine, people live there and from the comfort of their backyard, they can see the entire lake or meet sunsets every day or listen to the sound of waves. Isn't it fantastic? You know what? I'm definitely aiming to buy a house here one day. Let's continue walking through this park. What I wanted to show you is that there are little isolated areas along the trail where you can feel very private and away from bypassers. I think it's awesome because if you want to stay by yourself and have a peaceful place to enjoy this beautiful location, you can definitely land over here. Here it is. Look, this area is maybe just a few meters in diameter and uh, either side you come to it feels like it's hovering right over the lake. And when you end up here, you can relax and dream about something. And you'll be surrounded by sounds of waves and birds. It's definitely a place for meditation or any sort of calming activities. I think it's just amazing. As you walk through this park, eventually you'll find yourself in this little area with a lot of benches. And people sometimes just read books here or sit with loud ones and overlook the lake. That's also one of the highlights of this park, which I think is just fantastic. Remember I mentioned I was planning to go down to the lake? There is a completely different road that leads to that trail. However, for those who don't want to take an extra mile, here's a shortcut. I personally don't recommend taking it, as it could be very dangerous. But I saw people who were actually going down from here, and maybe after 5 minutes of struggles could reach the lake. I'm going to show a proper way of getting there, and this is our second destination in today's video. Now let's hit the road to our second destination. We have arrived to our next trail, which will lead us right to the lake, so let's come follow me. We are right at the entrance of the trail, and this trail was named after Doris McCarty. And now I'm going to tell you the story why. In 20th century, Doris McCarty was quite famous Canadian landscape artist. And there is an interesting story around her house. In 1939, she purchased a land on top of the Scarborough Bluffs with a fantastic view of the cliff. However, her mother found it a bit funny that her daughter decided to spend a lot of money on then not really developed piece of property, and she called it Fool's Paradise. Doris McCarty sort of accepted it, and Fool's Paradise stick to the name of her house. This house was eventually donated to Ontario Heritage Foundation in 1998, and on special days you can even book a tour and check it out. And since 2000, the trail which I'm going to take today was officially named after Doris McCarty in recognition of her work. The trail to the lake takes approximately 15 minutes of walk. And on the way there, you can see cozy houses uphill across the creek, lots of trees and even wild animals. It's 
it's always good to have a little brick and find appropriate log in the forest. And the reason why I'm taking this brick now is because we have finally got to the very, very end of this trail. And I can already see the lake right in front of me. And before I take my last move and actually hit the lake, you know, just, just calm down and relax a little bit. Uh, we can now finally meet the lake. Here it is. And the shoreline is uh, very extensive. Either way, you, you want to go to the right or to the left. There's still a, quite a long walk. And uh, it's always a great idea just to walk along this uh, harbor front and uh, enjoy the trail. You may wonder what this structure is. And actually there is a whole story behind it. So for those who have time, and come here uh, you can you know spend an extra few minutes just reading this Laos have a long history. These slopes are a part of the ancient coastline of the glacial lake Iroquois, formed around 13,000 years ago when the last ice age ended. The size of that lake was much more impressive than today's Lake Ontario that formed when St. Lawrence River got blocked by a huge piece of ice at the region of the current Thousand Islands. And to compare, the level of the lake back then was around 13 meters higher than today. The cliffs are still eroding till date, so sometimes chunks of this formation just fall off. That's why it's very important to be careful and never come close to edges. Now that we know more about these bluffs, it's time to look at it from the best angle.
I spent the entire day exploring different trails and hidden corners of this magnificent location. And I really like the fact that there are spots that seem so remote and peaceful, where not many people, and you can really reflect. Also, you can grab your friends or significant ones, and just escape a busy city life and connect with the nature and each other. And all of these feelings are just minutes away from the city. This tells me that in order to have a proper rest or catch a feeling of vacation, you don't really need to hop on a plane or take a multi-hour road trip. Everything is just right here where we live. And the more we explore, the more we enrich our lives. Find the time to travel and collect your own memories that you will remember for life. Mm -hmm.